boom, they took off. So this was written up. And when we investigated it, what, what, uh, I came to the conclusion that we are suffering something called UFO piracy. Not only are they coming down and uh, taking, uh, you know, biological material and samples and cattle, cattle mutilation samples and things like that, but they're also stealing uh, vast resources, water and electricity. There are a tremendous number of accounts of UFOs seen stealing water from lakes and reservoirs, as well as uh, hanging over power stations and stealing the energy from the power station. Maybe they're using them as rechargers for some of their craft. But if you go to UFO Digest and you, in the search engine, you type in UFO piracy. Another one is UFO smokescreen, which is about the control of UFO information that um, was implemented in the 1950s as a result of the Robertson Commission report. And uh, I just, there's quite a lot of UFO digest. I've suggested the one about the assassinations, the black hand in history. And I think if you study these three, you'll get a pretty good picture of what's going on. You know, we're being, uh, sure. there's a kind of lechery, you know, that's going on. You know, leche in Spanish means milk, to milk like a cow. And mm-hmm. I think the, the ETs uh, have been doing that. The gray ETs have been doing that to humankind for far too long. And they've always dressed Absolutely. themselves in a in a credible lie. In the Middle Ages, they were telling people they were, you know, uh, demons and uh, witches and carrying them off to the Sabbath and doing all kinds of uh, satanic things. But basically, it's the same story. And I think that Jacques Vallée really hit the nail right on the head in Passport to Magonia, although he seemed uh, to back off what he had found and kind of went in a different direction uh, after that. But I think that Passport to Magonia is uh, his masterpiece. Oh, really? That's interesting. Interesting. Good to hear that uh, there was a difference. So he changed changed his tune, huh? He changed his tune. Uh, Some people believe that he was bought out. compromised or or co-opted. He was at Stanford, you know, during the time uh, that the Stanford Research Institute was doing all that research in uh, into psychic phenomena. And shortly thereafter, he came out with these other concepts like uh, the mas- masters of deception and the planting of memes and disinformation technology. But he really backed way off the the brilliant insight that he had and reports in Passport to Magonia, which is basically that this phenomenon has always been here, accompanying humankind, um, and that it's been dressed, it's dressed itself up in various myths and legends that were appropriate to the culture in which it was manifesting at that time. So in, um, in Vedic India, Hindu India, it's Krishna, the blue Krishna, and the gopis, and the cowgirls dancing in the forest. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it's and very it's pervasive in, in the, the Hindu. The demigods of Greece and so on. Right. The Upanishads. Uh, yes. There's a question coming in here. Somebody's saying, how come all the ET sightings we hear of are from the U.S.? What is the importance? Uh, that's interesting because I don't hear them being just from the U.S. Actually, we hear well, huge think, sightings in the not- England and, and certainly in South America, but what? how would you address that question? Well, I'd say that the person has not read far enough uh, in the literature because the, um, the abduction phenomenon uh, spans the world. Um, the first thing that comes to mind uh, and most recent for me, uh, it's not U.S., is uh, the incident that occurred in uh, the early 2000s in... Um, South Africa, 63 children in a South African school who had an encounter with a UFO and extraterrestrials, and they all tell the stories and drew drawings. Yeah, that's uh, tremendous, excellent. Tremendous excellent. amount of abduction happens in Canada, uh, which some people kind of bundle with the U.S., but I don't. And I recommend very highly uh, a world um BC, UFO BC, British Columbia, 
um, .ca. It was run by Graham Conway, who passed away a few years ago. And actually, I, I have to pay tribute to this website and to Graham Conway because, you know, I've been in, involved in, in UFOs since 1956. My little brother, when he was seven in 1962, was abducted. He told me this of his abduction. He didn't see a UFO when when it happened. It was just these strange little creatures, as were high as the flower bed was, and who had big black eyes, and he called them like little munchkins, you know. And I was aware of abductions and studied them since 1962. But um, it's a widespread phenomenon, but I kept my involvement in ufology very secret. Uh, especially, for example, in the JFK assassination era, I was totally immersed in the JFK assassination and bringing that to light. And my cousin Mark was involved in ufology and wanted to get me involved openly. And I said, look, I don't want to have anything to do with ufology. And I've got the JFK assassination and I don't want it to be tainted, you know, because, you know. But, of course, I believe it. I know it. But I just didn't want to mix the two fields. And, look, after all those years of, of investigating JFK, it <laughs> comes down to UFOs got him killed. You know, there's yeah. a very interesting story about JFK's UFO encounter related by Dr. Michael Wolf, who was head of AlphaCom. And yes. in June of 1963, JFK was on his, his yacht, the Honey Fitz, off Martha's Vineyard when a UFO came down and parked itself to about uh, 200 feet away from the yacht and stayed there and created uh, panic on, on the yacht. The Secret Service went crazy. The guests went crazy. Uh, nobody knew what to do. Kennedy was looking at it, and all of a sudden it just went zip, went straight up into outer space. And Kennedy took his cousin and uh, the rest of the people and said, you must never talk about anything about this to anyone. But, of course, his cousin went home and blabbed to her husband. <laughs> First thing, Honey, you know what? I was like, Don't tell anybody, but I was on the yacht with Jack, and we saw a flying saucer. So I think now that happened in June of 63, and I think that that's what really lit the fire on JFK. Yeah. But he'd been interested in it since 1947 because, you know, the MJ-12 documents that you asked me about refer to him specifically in yes. uh, item 14 as uh, having been found out by Army intelligence. And basically, he was put on a watch list because he found <laughs> out, out about it out of official channels. He was briefed by a staff member, Secretary of the Air Force of the time, whose name was Stuart Symington, a very famous name in recent times, too. Five huh. Symington, governor of Arizona, is the nephew of Stuart Symington, who was the Secretary of the Air Force at the time of the Roswell crash. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, certain families get to kind of cover the story. Uh, we've got a question here, and then this is probably, I don't know if we'll even have time to go much farther than this, but someone is asking, are you aware of the wars going on by ETs in our solar system for control of the planet? Yes, I am very well aware of it, and the big part of it is, that's a big part of the reason for this kind of uh this process toward disclosure, I know that you had uh, Clay and Sean Pickering on your show, and uh, Clay yes. and Sean and, and the source are very, very close friends. We've been working together now for um, two and a half, almost three years, I guess, in uh, awakening the public. I know Source A very well. I respect him. I admire him. I have complete trust in his his uh, honesty and his loyalty to the Constitution of the United States and um, it's it's all working its way slowly you know you can't throw off the lies of 60 years without a great liability incurred for example you know if the government says okay you know the ETs are here and we made a deal with them that they could take, uh, you know, a certain number of humans right. and they could take as many cattle as they want for their purposes. We had to do it because we had no recourse. Well, forget about the abductees. I think that they're going to be going to ha have a hell of a time with all the ranchers who are going to say, Hey, Jack, <laughs> you owe me 
five hundred thousand dollars for all those cattle that you conveniently gave to your grave friends there. 